One of the biggest problems that I see in my career in higher education is that students who are A students in high school often get to college and they languish because they don't know how to study. So I'm, what I'm going to try to do is give you a few pointers on uh, how I studied as an undergraduate and maybe that could be useful to you. Maybe not, everybody's different. Um, but what I will say is uh, that in full disclosure, I was not a straight A student in college. Um, I was a little bit better than an A minus average student. I had a 3.71 GPA, which was good enough for summa cum laude, which was um, 5%, uh, top 5% in my graduating class. And more importantly, it was enough to get into PhD programs at Harvard, Stanford, uh, Caltech, and Berkeley. So um, it was fine uh, for me. It got me to where uh, I wanted to be. So what did I, uh, what did I do? Well, uh, number one, well, actually, this, this has to go at number zero. So before you do anything else, you have to, so this is point zero, um, eliminate distractions. What do I mean by eliminate distractions? So at the time, um, I, had a, I had a CRT uh, monitor, um, and what I, what I had in the, in the back of the, uh, in the, in the desktop background was just um, uh, three words that said, turn me off. So uh, turn off the computer so that I couldn't get distracted on Unreal Tournament and, uh, and AOL Instant Messenger and a lot of other things that people did to occupy their time in 2001 to, through 2005. Um, nowadays, I would say turn off your smartphone. Don't just put it to sleep or don't just put your laptop to sleep. Turn it all the way off so that there's a barrier, like an activation barrier to turn it back, turning it back on and, uh, and, and making yourself distracted. So when you're, uh, when you're studying or you're working on a paper or a homework assignment, if you have an hour to spend on it or two hours to spend on it and you get distracted by, uh, by five different, uh, five different um, uh, responses to text messages or, or say, you know, Facebook, what's on Facebook, um, that's gonna derail your studying and it's gonna feel like maybe 10 minutes of productivity even though you had uh, an hour or two hours to work on it. The first real uh, suggestion that I have after we've, uh, we've cleared out the distractions is to make note cards. So some people will tell you to uh, copy your notes after class. Now this can be useful in some circumstances, but I find that, that writing out the notes on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper doesn't, then it's not really a portable uh, form. So what I used to do, and I did this, um, I probably discovered this trick probably halfway through sophomore year in college, is I would go to uh, the drugstore or the bookstore and buy three by five index cards. And on the front side of the card, and the back side um, of the card. So the front side, I would write, uh, I would copy the notes. And these are the, uh, the lecture notes. You don't have to copy all of the lecture notes, just the parts that you have, uh, that you have trouble with. And then on the back of the card, you put some, some, kind, of, um, some kind of keystone bit of what you're trying to learn so that um, if, you, uh, if you look at the front of the card, there's, the front of the card is a prompt, and then you turn it around and you say, oh yeah, it's, it's that. So, um, so this is uh, some, some key, some key um, insight. Or you could, you could put jargon and the definition of the jargon. So in science and math and engineering courses, uh, the something like I don't know 75% of any field is actually just the uh, just the jargon, and once you know what the words mean, it's a lot easier to put together uh, the rest of the uh, of the concept or how to solve um, a uh, a problem. Another thing that I would put here are the homework problems. And then obviously on the back goes the solution. 
The reason we do this on a three by five card is so that we can take it with us when we're walking around um, or on the, <clears throat> on the train or on the bus um, as we're going to, uh, to school. So uh, number four, what I would put are the exam problems. And again, uh, the solutions. So these are the exam problems for the exams that you already took in preparation for the next exam or the final. In some circumstances, the faculty uh, member will, or the, uh, the instructor will give you the uh, exams from previous years. And in cases where it's legitimate to use those, um, you can also put those on the index card. So basically you have the whole course in a, uh, in your pocket in the form of these three by, three by five cards. This is to me by far the most important uh, tool that I used uh, to study. Um, this is uh, uh, study, study groups, uh, the number two. And I tend, I tend to think that study groups are a little bit overemphasized because uh, if you're going to use a study group, that's fine, but make sure that before you go there, you're prepared. So you've already made the note cards, you're prepared, to, you're prepared with questions for your classmates, um, and you're prepared to, to help your classmates along because nothing uh, helps, uh, nothing, nothing um, uh, writes the information into your brain better than does explaining it to others. And that's what I've found certainly as being uh, an instructor for many uh, uh, courses over the, last, uh, over the last several years. So study groups, I think more important than, uh, than, a, than a big group is to find one or two people that you really uh, connect with. And um, importantly, the uh, you have one or two people, um, probably one. If you can find one person like this, you're you're lucky. Who is as smart or ideally smarter than you, um, but with whom you are not afraid of, uh, to whom you're not afraid of embarrassing yourself by saying something that might not be uh, that might not be right. Um, another thing you can do is. Uh, is read uh, ahead of time. So this is reading before coming to class. Um, at the very least, you should study the notes and put the relevant parts on note cards before coming to class. But reading before coming to the class, particularly if the textbook uh, goes along well with the way in which the instructor is teaching the course, can be quite helpful. Now, in full disclosure, I rarely did this, but I wish that I had uh, done it more often. Um, number four. Number four is uh, try office hours. I'm not going to suggest to you that going to every professor's office hours are equally useful or every TA's office hours are equally useful. Sometimes they are not useful. Sometimes um, they, uh, the instructor is not necessarily forthcoming with the information that you want or maybe they don't make you feel uh, uh, comfortable in the, the office hour uh, setting. Um, they, in, in terms of, uh, you don't feel like, uh, um, uh, I don't mean that in any sketchy way. I mean, sometimes you're, you're not comfortable, um, uh, uh, betraying your own ignorance in front of the professor or the TA. And I completely understand that. If you find that the office hour is not helpful to you, you it's not like you have to keep going, uh, every week because an hour is a lot of time and it's time that you could be reviewing the notes, say, on your note cards, which you've already made. Okay, uh, and then five, so this is after we've done all of this stuff to the extent that we, that we want to do it, and that is um, exam strategies. And um, There are two subparts to the exam strategies. One is do the easy ones first. So do the easy parts 
first. And why? Because if we get hung up on the ones that we don't know how to do, even if it's number one and number two, problem number one and problem number two in order, never take a test in order. Um, uh, but, it, but if we get hung up on the ones that, we, that are challenging and that we don't know how to do, we might use up all our time. And then when we get to the one that's easy, we run out of time and we can't finish it, even though we, know how to, we knew how to do it. So we're giving away points. So do the easy parts first. Do the, that is the, the parts that you already know how to do. Uh, and number two um, is to write something for everything. So writing something for everything is equivalent to maximizing uh, your, um, your partial credit. And uh, chances are, unless you leave it blank or are completely off base, the, uh, the professor or more likely the TA will give you partial credit. So leave nothing blank, do the easy parts first. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, and let me know if it was and if you'd like to see more uh, vignettes uh, like this. Take care.